Hi guys, uh, it's Ho Croston back again. Uh, this time I'm going to tie a, a spent spinner pattern. This is what I just call a sight spinner. Uh, it's not necessarily my pattern. Um, it just happens to be the spinner that I use a, a lot of the time when I'm fishing uh, to fish selectively in spent spinners. So typically summer months, uh, evening times or occasionally very early in the morning. Um, it's really a generic pattern. You, you can vary the body colour uh, quite a lot and the wing colour to some extent. Um, really this fly is all about the imprint in the surface film that it gives. Um, it's a really useful fly. Uh, so I'm going to plow straight on and, uh, and knock one up. So the hook's a size 16 H130 BL dry fly hook. I do tie it in 18s and 20s as well. Typically 18s about my most often used size. Uh, the thread I'm using is a, a gel spun polyurethane type uh, power thread. Um, this one I actually get from uh, from my good friend Eduardo Dona in Italy. Um, run right down to the end of the shank. Leave the tag end hanging. I'm going to use that in a minute. Uh, the tail on this fly is uh, a couple of microfibits. Microfibits are just basically finely tapered uh, synthetic uh, brush fibres, basically. Uh, these ones are black. You can use any colour you want. It's really the imprint that we're looking for in the surface film. Uh, I tie these in straight on top of the hook shank with a pinch and loop. Get them in nice and tight. You've got slippy thread on a slippy material. So you want it in quite tight. Shorten them to the right sort of length. You want them at least twice the length of the body for this kind of spinner pattern. Uh, to split them, force them up with your thumbnail and that'll split them out nicely. Then you just bring that thread straight between the two, pin it down on top. That'll help keep them splayed. Now, it's worth noting when you see a lot of spinner patterns, again on Facebook or uh, ones in, in some time videos I've seen, uh, there's a real focus on trying to get the tails completely straight and in a lovely V formation. If you actually look at a real spinner on the surface of the water, it's very, very rarely complete. It's nearly always floating down as a crumpled mess, the body twisted to one side, the tails aren't straight, sometimes a wing missing. They're normally a bit of a mess. Um, there is actually a very, very good fly by a guy called Kelly Gallup, uh, Gallup's Cripple. Um, that's one of my favourite spinner patterns, and I might tie sort of like my version of one of those at some point. Um, but this one also works really well. The tails aren't perfectly split, and I don't want them to be either. I want that sort of slightly messy look. So I'll run the thread up to about a third of the way down from the eye. Then I'm going to knock on some dubbing. This is a, an SLF mix of uh, fiery orange and bright red. I like SLF. Um, because it's got a little bit of sparkle to it, a little bit of luster, a little bit like a real spent spinner. Um, and then I'm going to take that back down the shank to just shorter the tails. That point then, I'm going to go in and I'm going to colour this white thread with a lime green marker pen. Then a little bit lower down the thread, I'm going to colour it in with some dark brown. And you'll notice I've left a little tiny gap at the back just before the tails. And I'll go over that with the green thread. You can completely omit this step if you want. The only reason I tend to do it is uh, Paul Proctor is a good friend of mine. He really likes a, a green spot at the butt end of some of his spinner patterns. Um, and it does tend to work. Whether it makes any massive difference or not is debatable. But, you know, if it's good enough for him, why not? Now I'll use that brown thread to go backwards and forwards over the dubbed body. It might look messy, you can't actually see it, as a matter of fact, but you might think it's going to be messy. It's really just about belt and braces. I want that fly to be durable, I don't want it to come to pieces in use, and the fish really don't care. I've trimmed down any stray fibres because the body should be quite compact because it's a spinner pattern. That point then, I'm going to catch in a little bit of hot pink poly yarn when you're catching any of these kind of materials in the easiest way to do it is to fold it around your thread and use your thread to guide it into the position you want it on top of the hook that is the easiest way to catch in these kind of materials then knock a turn on and then we're going to shorten it up instead of trimming it again because it's a little bit quicker 
tied in nice and tight so it can't move. At that point, then we're going to get the winging material. Winging material again, in this case, is a white poly yarn. Um, not a great big thick hank. I've seen some spinner patterns, and there's enough to tie 10 flies in the one. You really don't want loads and loads. Um, you just want enough to float the fly and give you a wing imprint. That's all you're looking for. Fold that round the thread, pin that in, straight in the middle. Another turn to be safe. And then I'm going to reposition the wings at 90 straight across the body. And I'm going to drop in figure of eight turns. These can be slack turns. One of the beauties about GSP or Power Silk is slack turns, then you can pile the pressure on and it'll tighten up. So there's the wings. You can see they're delted out quite nicely. Still looks an absolutely horrific mess at the minute. Now, before I do any trimming, I'm going to knock on a little bit of olive brown SLF. Just a little thin noodle of it. And I'm going to go in between those wings. Like so. Figure of eight. That's done. Then I'm going to bring the hot pink over. Sweep the wings back out of the way for now. Tie right in behind the eye. Nice and tight. And then I'm going to pull it right back and catch it in again. This is to force it back because I don't want it protruding over the eye at all. I just want it sitting in the middle like that. Then I'll go in and I'll whip finish right behind the eye, pull it tight, get rid of the thread, and now it's all down to trimming. So what I'll do, first thing, pull this up, trim this little sight of post, give myself a couple of mil of sight of post, just enough, straighten the wings up, Pull them both up. Make one slightly downward angled cut. Cut them long first to be on the safe side. You can always uh, take more off. You can't add any on. Uh, pull them down back into a bit of a delta shape. That's not fair wrong. If you want to make them look pretty, you can do, but it won't last because the fish will eat them uh, and they'll get pretty screwed up. And to be honest, the more fish you're catching them, the better they get. Um, shape them a little bit if you really want to, but again, you don't need to. There we go. That's a little pink posted sight spinner. It's got the right profile. Looks good on the water. And most importantly, unlike a lot of Calder Canard spinners, you can get this thing fishing again in seconds. Uh, Calder Canard spinners are great, the fish really do eat them very very well but if you're fishing to a heavy spinner fall the fish are going nuts and you're catching a lot of fish which is more than possible at that time of year and with this kind of fly. Uh, Calder Canard spinners take far too long to primp and dry out for me and tying another one on in failing light with fish all around you again is a big no-no for me. Uh, so I tend to prefer this style of fly or a semicircle spinner, which I'll probably tie at some later point. So there we go. Knock a few up and uh, knock them out.